Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about something I'm very excited about, which is one of the key updates with Spacey 3.5. For those of you who don't know, Spacey went to 3.5 in late January of 2023. I believe it was the 21st around that date. And with it comes a great new feature that we have to talk about on this channel because it's something that I do all the time and these custom components, it looks a little clunky. It's difficult to implement well, and that is fuzzy matching within a Spacey pipeline. Now 3.5 makes it where you can use the standard pattern matcher, entity ruler patterns, span patterns, what you name it, you can do it now as an actual normal pattern that you would use in your Spacey workflow. And if you wanna see what we're doing in this video, there's a link in the description down below, which is gonna go through all the different updates with Spacey 3.5. I'm only talking about the fuzzy match. Now I'll do other videos on the other updates, but the fuzzy matching is the one I'm most excited about. So for those of you who don't know, fuzzy matching is a way in which you can match strings that might have a different, like a slight variation in the way that a spelling is rendered. This is really common if you're working with like medieval Latin or if you're working with texts from the internet where spelling conventions kind of go out the window. And so fuzzy matching allows for you to find matches even if they're spelt a little differently or uh, they're not kind of standardized in some standard way. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we might implement this in Spacey. We're gonna load up a blank Spacey model. And we're just gonna make this EN for English. And then we're gonna add a ruler to it. This is gonna be an entity ruler, but you can do this with a phrase matcher, matcher, or span ruler, you name it, you can do it with it. Uh, we're gonna add uh, NLP dot add pipe entity ruler, and then we're gonna uh, create a pattern. So let's go ahead and take the pattern that's provided to us right here. We're just gonna do a, a slight change to it for the purposes of, of our video. We are going to use Voldemort, and I think it's not spelt with an E, I can't remember, but as we're gonna see, that doesn't really even matter. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to wrap this though in a dictionary, and we need to make this our pattern, and then we need to have a label which equates to person, even though I think that we can argue maybe Voldemort's not really a person. That's a whole other debate that we can get into. Is he just pure evil? I don't know. Um, so let's go ahead and do nlp.add pattern, and we're gonna load up our pattern. Now it's important to remember that we have to wrap this in a list. Otherwise, if we try to do this, we'll get an error. And the reason is because add pattern takes a list of patterns. Uh, oh, add patterns. There we go. And I still haven't spelt it correctly. Oh, and I have to do it to the ruler. Ruler.add patterns. There we go. And now everything's loaded up correctly. So I want to create a doc object, which is going to be, uh, it's going to be a text that's passed over by NLP. Uh, we're going to just say Harry fought Voldemort. So what is our pattern doing? Well, our pattern is saying we're looking for any instance where Voldemort, when lowercase, um, and it's going to force the whole string to be lowercase when it's doing this, equates to uh, that rendition. So if I were to do displacey.render doc style is equal to int, ooh, ooh, international keyboard, sorry about that, is equal to true. Uh, this lets us visualize our result and we see that this works. Now this would work if we didn't use fuzzy. It would work fine with just lower because this is a perfect string match. So uh, what does fuzzy let us do? Well, imagine that Voldemort is sometimes spelled with an E. It's grabbed it. Uh, maybe it's a typo where the person uh, uh, does that. Uh, but we're gonna notice that if we get a little bit more with our changes, uh, things start to look a little clunkier. And let's go ahead and just add in some extra text. And we get absolutely nothing. So what's going on here? Well, Spacey is using a very specific form of uh, the Levenstein uh, distance where it's actually looking for the uh, number of edits in the actual string as well as the actual string itself. So you can specify the degree to which you want to actually represent these edits. Hold them more. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to our default text. So I can go ahead and I can say um, that this uh, Voldemort is still gonna work just fine, but if I specify that I'm only looking for a variation of one edit, it's actually going to break. So um, this has not met the actual threshold for the number of edits that need to be present uh, for it to actually render a text. Uh, let's go ahead and call him re Voldemort, and we can start to adjust and account for this by upping the number of edits that we allow 
going up a little bit higher each time. And we see that this right here, this very, very different string is still being grabbed correctly. Now, the number that you specify here is very important. If we were to up this to 10, we're gonna just flag everything. So the amount of fuzziness that you wanna add into your string matching is gonna be kind of case by case dependent or domain dependent. So I see this working in a couple different places. For example, if I were to be working with a spacey pipeline in Latin, like we use at the Classical Language Toolkit, uh, and I were using my rules-based method for matching um, kind of Latin-based names, uh, the last name is going to have a declination pattern, which can be first, second, third declension, etc. And it can decline differently depending on the declension, but the root word typically is going to remain the exact same. Fuzzy matching would let you use one root for the name and match all the examples. Now, certain names are going to lead to false positives like Romanus being a, Rom uh, a typical Roman name, or it might be flagged for Roma. Uh, in Latin, but for the most part, that could be a way that you could account for and grab different declined words of the same root word. So there's a lot of different applications for fuzzy. I thought I'd make this quick video. They just kind of talk about it, why it's useful, how I see it kind of being used in different workflows with digital humanities texts or just texts in general. But I am very excited about this update. If you've liked this video, like and subscribe down below. Let me know in the comments how you're using fuzzy. If you want to hear more about the updates, let me know and I'll post more videos about the spacey updates that just came out. Uh, if you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it via Patreon or YouTube membership. As always, I do everything on this channel for free. Uh, thank you all to all of you all who keep this channel afloat by supporting it on one of these two platforms. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for listening.